Hi, how's it going? Luz Gonzalez here with you today again. Today I'm going to be talking about my career pivot. Now, I've had a lot of conversations around my career pivot, enough uh, that I decided that it would be a really good idea for me to create a video. I've had so, so, so many conversations around this. I've had people who are practicing law who are thinking of, I, I'm just not happy. Can you tell me more about why, why you switched from practicing to now being in tech? I've had conversations with people thinking of going into law school, and I've had conversations with people just wondering if they're in the right place or thinking of what their next step is going to be. So if you are someone who's thinking of going to law school, if you are a, an attorney who is not happy with the work that they're doing, if you are thinking of your next step and what that's gonna look like, uh, I hope that as I share my, my background and the thought process and things that I did, that that's gonna be helpful for you as you think of your next step. So let's start at the beginning. Um, and I guess if I think of the beginning of where that is, it actually starts quite a long time ago. It starts when I was in elementary school or just a really you know, young girl. And it starts as corny and cheesy as it sounds. It starts with a vision. And that vision has always been to help the most amount of people that I could. I, I came up with a, doing the most amount of good for the most amount of people in the least amount of time at the lowest cost. And that's guided every single decision that I've ever made. It's the reason that I went to law school. It's the reason that I focused on international human rights law and that I re focused on international relations when I was an undergrad. It's the reason that I did Teach for America and it's the reason that I'm in tech today. So back to the, the law school thing. I thought that by being an attorney, I would be able to impact just like a, a ginormous, I don't I don't even understand the, the number. I don't know that there's an word for the number of the, the type of impact that I wanted to have, want to have. And so I thought that one of the best ways for me to do that was going to be to, to go to law school so I could either work on policies or work with organizations that were going to be helping thousands or millions or more people. And what happened when I was in law school, I so I, I started with a focus on international criminal law and international human rights law and uh, you know, spent some time in The Hague. And part of it was that I decided I did not want to live in The Hague or in New York or DC for the rest of my life. I love my family too much, they're here. Berkeley and the Bay Area is home. Uh, it's, it's where I decided and found out I wanted to be. And so that me not being in the Netherlands and me not being in New York or DC meant that I was going to have to find something here in California, specifically in the Bay Area, where I could still achieve that level of impact. And so then I thought, well, let's let's look at criminal, domestic criminal law, and let's look at you know public interest law. And so I had a few experiences doing some law-related work in those areas. I was a, a clerk for a district attorney's office and when I was doing that work the people that were there were just phenomenal just great people the work was actually really fun uh, you you are on your toes you uh, there's not you, you don't get bored which did happen in, in some other work that I did and uh, it was it was exhilarating but as you know, you will hear from authors and you'll hear from other people if there's a misalignment in values and the way that you see the, the world and what you're trying to achieve, then you're just, you're, that's going to lead to some unhappiness and that's what happened for me. I was in my suit, I would get to um, go before a judge and tell the judge why the person before me should go to jail uh, or have some sort of other legal consequence and through those experiences of me being in my nice suit and the person being in their orange jumpsuit, I just thought I I don't I don't believe in jail actually. I I believe in fixing things and solving things. And by sending someone 
to jail or sending more people to jail, we're not making things better. Uh, especially if you look at the statistics and if you look at the numbers, sending someone to jail is like sending them to you know criminality university or something. And so I felt like it was very hypocritical for me to do that work. Now, I do have to say the prosecutors that I met and the people that I met were doing the work for the right reasons. And they were excited and they were passionate and they were there because they wanted to protect people who had had awful, awful things happen to them. And I really respect and honor that. But because of the misalignment for me and my life experiences having shaped the perspective that I have, it was just not the place for me. And so you're gonna have to ask yourself, especially if you're thinking of domestic criminal law, if, if that's gonna work for you. And so the entire system didn't work for me, right? So the what I started discovering was that the entire legal structure was something that I was not gonna be very excited to be part of. And uh, specifically with, with the work that I was doing, uh, seeing criminals before me, I I mean, I was a teacher, I did Teach for America, and so when I saw the the people in their orange jumpsuits, I didn't, I didn't see criminals. I saw lack of access to excellent education, and so I saw lack of access to medical uh, care, you know, services and care, lack of access, access to mental uh, services. I saw the, the cycle of poverty. I saw us not teaching the right subjects in school. There were so many more important things at stake that we weren't doing. And so I, I actually had conversations and I asked, what are we doing to have less? Our, our job should actually be to have less people before us. And the, the answer was, that's not my job. And it's true, that's, that, that's not a prosecutor's job. Uh, and I just, again, back to values, that could not be the work that I was going to dedicate the, the rest of my life to. Uh, the the work, people that I met and that I worked with, some of my favorite people, they're just so energetic. And again, the work itself is fun. You're on your toes. Uh, and we're, we'll be talking more about this and why that's meaningful. So then I thought, let me do public interest law. And so I went to work at, if possibly, the most progressive uh, big public interest law organization there is. I worked at the ACLU and again, the people there were phenomenal, fantastic. They uh, they care so much. Their hearts just like, they're there for the right reasons. And I learned so much from everyone that I met. But this time, rather than there being a values misalignment, there was a skill set and uh, what's going to make me happy misalignment. And so I'm a, if you haven't noticed, I'm a people person. I love people. And... I love talking, and my strengths are when I'm doing people work. People, people work. <laughs> and that's not what I was doing. And so I was, just like many people who are in law, I was doing a lot of legal writing and legal reading and le reading of memos ugh, and writing legal memos and not talking and not working on my strengths, which is talking to people and being a people person. I got to do a little bit of that work being a field fellow, uh, but not necessarily in the, the legal fellowship work that I had. And so that was, I'm glad I went through that because that was really enlightening and then I discovered, oh man, I cannot be, and I, I, I should have known this before, but I cannot be behind a computer all day and just chip away at that work and then be happy. And I'm not gonna be producing my, my best work. And what you hear over and over and over again, regardless of the author that you read or the, the level of success that people reach, is that we need to pursue our passion. And as corny as that sounds, it's it's beyond the like the, the, the pursue your passion thing. It's if you wanna be successful at what you're doing, you need to care about what you're doing. And so, you do have to pursue that passion. And part of that is finding out what that passion is and finding out how that's gonna work. So then I decided public interest law is not for me. So I had done the international criminal law, the international human rights law, which was really cool, but I also saw the limitations in terms of 
really shaking things up, right? And, and getting to doing the most amount of good for the most amount of people in the least amount of time at the lowest cost. Being an attorney in all of its shapes and sizes and you know what it could look like for me, it just wasn't going to get me to where I'm going. The other thing that was really concerning, and, and I don't think that I'm saying anything that's shocking news for anyone, is a lot of the people that I met were in law, practicing law. They were handling stress, which is very different from living a life that is challenging, yet the type of life you want to be living, right? And so in terms, again, and people, you, you should know who you are and what you want from your life. I know what I want from my life. And given the people that I met who were practicing law, I have not met one person yet that I thought, I want your life. I've met so many people in law that I just thought, you're a kick-ass, you know, badass. You are doing great things in life. You are making a difference. I love your personality. But when it came to who do, if I could switch places and if I could have your life, and again, this is just what I want. Uh, I did not meet anyone that I thought you're doing life the way that I want to do life. Uh, and so I just thought law is just not going to be for me. But it, we know this. There are high rates of alcoholism. Uh, people are unhappy. The other thing is like if you're working at a law firm, especially at law firms, you go in as a first year associate in many places you're not treated very well right so you start at the bottom of the totem pole and that wasn't very exciting for me and when i was in law school i didn't partake in the uh the journals i thought like why am i gonna oh blue booking don't get me started on blue booking that's just oh the fact that anyone has to do that ever oh it made me it still makes me shiver but through the journals some of the work you know, was, was enticing and, and challenging and fun, but a lot of it was the, the stuff that, of course, like, there are some things that you need to do, but I just, I'm not the type of person that will ever want to sit there and do blue booking. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, just disregard the whole blue booking thing. It's a way that uh, attorneys do, uh, like, citations for cases that just no human being should have to do. Thank God, I'm, I'm sure that technology is going to be disrupting that. So, uh, on so many levels, on values levels, on potential impact levels, on life fulfillment, I, I mean, I created happenizing for God's sake. So the verb of like to happiness, the, the verb happenize, happenizing, I created happenizing after, uh, being in law school and being very, very stressed and that stress leading to a, a awful anxiety attack where I was driving over the bridge and you know my my legs started going numb and my like left arm started going numb I thought I was gonna have a stroke and I had to park at Treasure Island my friends had to come get me and take me to the ER and you know that that was there are so many blessings in disguise that we get right and so that was one for me where I just thought oh man Luz you need to get a hold of of your stress and the, the way that you're living life and so that's when I jumped into positive psychology and I learned about genomics and epigenetics and the, the, the brain I just I was already fascinated by the brain but after that and after seeing the way that stress was affecting me I just decided I wanted to learn everything that I could about the brain and so then I created happenizing from this this kind of awful experience and so happiness and fulfillment and passion are things that I care about and I just did not see myself having those things with impact uh, by, by pursuing a career in law. And so for those of you that are thinking of going to law school, I would ask a few things. And, and for those of you that are practicing law as well, and in just in general, like I can generalize this. Think of what's the purpose why why do you want to practice law or why do you want to go to your next step in in your career what's driving that is is it because you really are driven by that field is it that you feel like it's a 
proper alignment of your skill sets in the work that you're going to be doing. Uh, what What's getting you there? For, again, for me, it was impact. What's the potential for impact that I can have? And also fulfillment. Can I be happy? I, I will be happy with, with the work that I do. And so can I, being an attorney, be happy? And so as you think about it, if your answer is one of along the lines and the people that I've spoken to, that's kind of why they're thinking about law school. And I mean, if you would have sat me down and I wish somebody would have, I think I was stubborn enough that I probably still would have gone to law school and, and I learned a lot and I don't regret it. I think it was great, learned definitely a ton and met some fantastic people. But I, I was, I was like I had blinders on, and I didn't even consider business school. I didn't consider policy school. So there are options, and I just want you to be sure that you have options. If you're considering grad school, if you're considering business school, if you're considering um, policy school or going whatever your PhD, I would just ask that you answer the question why. Why do I think that this next step? And also, if you're moving to a different different job what do I think that this is going to get me closer to where I want to go and do I know where I want to go and the values that are guiding these decisions so after deciding and really knowing that I, that practicing law was not going to be for me I thought well what am I going to do what's next and so it was easier because I had I already had this guiding principle right which is doing the most amount of good for the most amount of people in the least amount of time the lowest cost and I also had a location which was the Bay Area and so I said what can I do in the Bay Area where I can really work on big impact and there were a couple of you know a few things that I was thinking of one was working for a nonprofit organization for the longest time I had thought that, you know, I'm going to be the executive director for a nonprofit. And uh, it just happened that I was, I was not invited. I invited myself. I invited my brother to this hackathon that was put on for youth. And I just wanted to see my brother being a nerd and, you know, being excited at building things and technology. And I had already been interested in technology. I was reading books and, you know, listening to biographies. And I had tried to take a class at Berkeley for how to start a startup. I just had to drop it because of the, the load um, at Berkeley Law. And so I went to this hackathon uh, and I, again, brought my brother with me. And I just wanted to see him being in his space of delight and joy. And I just said, put me wherever. Put me. I just, I just want to help. I will volunteer. I will do whatever you need me to do. And so they put me as a facilitator for a group, a group of kiddos that happened to be part of mm, like a sister organization for a scholarship that I had gotten when I went to uh, undergrad, when I went to Berkeley. And so that was super cool. So I got to work with these Smash scholars and working with these phenomenal kids and just providing some guidance and working together to solve a real societal problem using technology was amazing, right? And so we, we were working and having conversations of the different things that the kids were excited about. And towards the end of the night, we started thinking, you know what? I mean, I, didn't, I definitely did not go trying to win anything. I was just there to help. But towards the end of the night, I thought, holy smokes, we have a real chance of winning this whole thing. And so that was really exciting. The next day we continued working and we had to find our product, which was kind of the OkCupid okay for mentorship for, for uh, it could be for high schoolers, it could be for undergrads, it could be for people our age. And so kids were working on this, that it looked phenomenal, the design was there, the technology was there, and uh, it was getting time to present and we felt more and more confident and we, we worked on our pitch, the pitch was perfect, practice, practice, practice. And so the kids went up there and when they presented, it was kind of clear that they had done a really, really good job. And it happened that our team one was one of the winners for the hackathon. And during that ex whole experience, which again, I just went to because my brother was gonna be there as a participant, my eyes 
and my perspective was opened for the first time as to the impact that technology can and does have in people's lives. And so that's when I had that aha moment, that epiphany of like, oh, this is it. This, this is what I've been looking for. And so the we won, the kids were super excited uh, because they, they won. They were invited to the Lean Startup Conference. And as their facilitator, you know, I was going to be their, <laughs> their chaperone. And so I got to go to the, the Lean Startup Conference and just getting to talk to CEOs of companies and getting to meet people who are solving real problems, problems that are, you know, that could help thousands or millions or more people through the use of technology. That's when it came together and I just thought, oh, I'm home. This is it. This is what I've been looking for. This is how we scale social impact. It's through technology working social impact that we get to a point where we can help millions or you know billion people. And so then I said, okay, this this is it. I found what I'm going to be doing and so started working or looking for for a job in tech, which is actually really hard. And so this is other another piece of advice uh, and the conversations that I've had if especially for me being having a legal uh, background and not wanting to to work say for a startup or an organization doing legal work I wanted to do I, I thought um, that my skill set would be best served in the business aspect of, of the company which is what I'm doing um, I thought like let me apply to to various companies and so I applied and I would go to events and I was just so excited especially after that experience of the hackathon and the lean startup conference I just knew that was the space right but as someone working in in the legal field I would go to these events and people would say like well why are you here uh, you're not you don't work at a startup you don't work at a technology company and it felt I felt like an outsider and if you have felt this if you uh, are trying to get into technology, into tech and breaking in, I'm gonna provide some more, more feedback, but you do belong. And we need your perspective in technology. It is by having the diverse perspectives, both career and background, just having diverse people, especially at technology companies, means that we can build better products provide better customer care, we can reach a lot more people. And so do we, do you belong in tech? Yes, you absolutely belong in tech. And we can talk about where in tech you belong, depending on your skill set. Now, I had various conversations and I was going to end up working at another organization that I adore. And it just, I heard of an opportunity or a a company and so I had a conversation with the CEO and that conversation was like magical and I was like oh my goodness this is it this is what I've been looking for so within three days I had you know I had a job offer and I had given my two weeks notice and started working at that company where, where I work now two weeks after that and it's it's been phenomenal so how did I get there there were a lot of questions that I had to ask myself and I really needed to get to know myself at a very deep level um, that was both big picture and small picture and I think this is what was key and this is what I have conversations with people around so I started asking myself where when have I felt energized when have I felt most successful in my life and I before the weekend you know various weekends, I would sit there and I would journal and I would think of, you know, I feel most energized and I do my best work when I'm in front of people, when I'm working with people, when I'm working on partnerships, when I'm bringing people together, when I'm thinking of uh, institutional memory. And so I went all the way back to elementary school and I started jotting down all of the times that I was, that I felt successful. It doesn't matter what other people think is success or not success when did you feel successful 
when did you feel energized? And based on those answers, so first go through your life and say like, oh, that's a time that I felt successful and energized. That's another time, that's another time. So list them all. After you've listed them, then you're gonna go and look at each and every single one of them and try to see if there are any patterns. Were you, and then beyond the patterns, before you do the pattern searching, you're gonna see and you're gonna list what exactly was I doing? And you're gonna say, you know, I was, I don't know, I was working on logistics for this thing, I was writing a lot, I was drawing, I was talking to people, I was, write down the actual thing that you were doing. And just, you can do bullet points. And then when, you're gonna do this for all of the things when you felt most successful and most energized. And then after you've done that, then you're gonna look at each of one of them and say, of all those things that I was doing in that job or for that project or with that thing that I was doing activity, what pieces was I most energized by and that I feel most successful doing? And so that's gonna give you your pattern recognition of where can, where, where can I excel? And so I did that for going, I, I actually, uh, nerd alert, I have my resume all the way from fourth grade a resume from fourth grade or I started a resume when I was in fourth grade and so I looked at all of the activities starting fourth grade and thinking of when have I felt most energized when have I felt like I'm rocking it I'm doing a good job and based on that information that I knew about myself and also the other thing I if you know me you know that I talk a lot about Myers-Briggs and I do a lot of analysis based on your Myers-Briggs. And so I would recommend that you take your Myers, the Myers-Briggs test, which you can take on humanetrics.com. And it's not gonna tell you, it's not deterministic of you know, who you are and like what jobs you can apply for and which ones you cannot for, you know, apply for. But it's been really helpful, at least for me, to think of what my strengths are. And then also beyond that, to work as a team and to see how, how do you balance a team and have a really strong team or company or whatever that might be. And so I looked at my Myers-Briggs and I looked at previous experiences and based on all of that information, I created a list of what would be for me my dream job. And I actually, it's right here, I had things. And so just, just to share how specific those things were, they were things as specific as, I'm talking a lot. Yes, I like talking. Big surprise. Um, I work somewhere lively, loud. So it's it's at every level. It's at the big picture level and it's at the very minute level of what does it sound like? What does it look like? How many people am I working with? When I was doing those projects or working on that thing or doing that activity, was I doing solo work? Was that when I was most energized and excited? Was I working with lots of people? And when I say lots of people, do I mean three people? Do I mean 10 people? Do I mean 30 people, 100, 500? Of those, which ones was I most energized by? So I have stuff like that here. Team is really important to me. So I have here, I'm part of a phenomenal team. Culture is huge for me. And that's actually kind of, hard to gauge when you're, you're doing your job search. Um, I wanted to work in an entrepreneurial environment. I wanted to work in an office where there are over 30 people. Uh, I cared about having lunch with my coworkers and being them being people that I wanted to hang out with. Uh, again, talking a lot every day. I'm collaborate, collaborating with the team. So very, very specific. And so based on that work, I then thought of positions within tech that I would be interested in. I did not try to fit myself into a job. I understood who I was and I only looked for jobs where I could be successful. Because otherwise, what's the point, right? So, so many people, that's what they do. They try to, whether it be in law or whether it be engineering or in tech, wherever, they say like, oh my goodness, there's a job. And they try to like morph themselves and turn themselves into something that they're not. And then they wonder why they're unhappy. 
and why they feel unfulfilled. So I would say really understand who you are, what you bring to the table, what your strengths are, when you feel most successful and confident, and just like good about what you're doing. And then based on that understanding, then you start your job search. Then you start thinking of where should I, where am I gonna be a good fit? Because you really wanna be a good fit. And let me tell you, I, so when I was having that conversation with the CEO for the company where I currently work, I was just like, oh my God, flying for a line. This is like what, I, what I've been wanting. And it's a phenomenal feeling. It's the best feeling. And I just was not gonna have this in law to wake up in the morning and to be so giddy and excited about the work that you're gonna be doing. And it's possible. You can have that level of engagement and passion for the work that you're doing, but you're gonna have to really understand who you are and what makes you happy. What makes you happy can be completely different from what makes me happy. And like, that's a really good thing, right? Because then we can have people who can be developers and engineers and we have people who can be the creative people and we have people who really like structure and we need everyone to have a balanced, cooperative and successful team. And so it's not a matter of judgment of what's good, what's bad. It's what do you want? Who are you? What do you bring to the table? And in your job search and thinking of your next steps, is that gonna shine through? Is your personality and your strengths, are they gonna shine through? through and are they going to be used for me when they weren't being used I felt just it was like sucking my soul dry and that was awful and so having work where I feel engaged (laughs) I get to talk to people all the time and I, I get to do some public speaking and get to work on partnerships and setting institutional memory and all these things like that has been awesome and I wish for everyone to experience what it feels like to have a job that you really are passionate about. And just what I say is we're at work often at a minimum, you know, nine to five, if not way longer than that. So these are gonna be the people you're gonna be hanging out with. This is gonna be the work that you're gonna be doing every single day. The work that you engage in is going to be literally reshaping the neural networks that you have to work with. Are you, do you have a job that's driven by fear? When I was in law school and when I was, you know, not practicing per se, but like after when I was doing some legal work, what I noticed was as someone who is focusing on law, I saw around me all the things that could go wrong. I saw everything that there could be a lawsuit for. And for me, that for me, that's just no way to live. I choose the entrepreneur perspective, which is that I see everything that can go right. And for me, that's a very empowering place to be. So I know that I've been talking for a really long time. I hope that this has been helpful. That's provided some guidance, some pointers. If you have any questions or if you have uh, anything else that you'd like me to cover, please comment below. Uh, Again, hoping that this is helpful in some way, that it provides guidance. I know that it was a really powerful process for me to go through and one that I will keep if I ever need to think of my next steps. uh, I will definitely keep in mind, and I have this documented, where are my strengths, what are my strengths, who am I, and is the work that I'm doing values aligned? And so I wish for you uh, passion in the work that you do and in your life and a fulfilled uh, sense of living your most fulfilled life. Thank you guys and I will be in touch. Bye-bye.